Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys lately, so I thought I'd take a few minutes and answer some of the more commonly asked questions. There's a lot of things you may have been wondering and there's a pretty good chance that someone has asked, so be sure to stay tuned and maybe I'll have the answer for you. As always, keep the questions coming. I always enjoy these segments, seeing what you guys want to know about boas, and hopefully I can provide you at least some guidance on some of these different questions. So let me just grab my list here. And so the first question, and this is exactly as it was asked without any editing, why my Central American boa eats only raw chicken? Okay, so if your Central American boa is eating only raw chicken, it's probably because that's what you're offering it. And you know, it's gotten conditioned to want the raw chicken, it tastes good to it. And maybe now it's reluctant, it doesn't want to eat rats or rodents or, you know, quail or anything like that. And, you know, boas in general are really not picky eaters. And they're almost always hungry. So if, you're, if your animal is only eating the chicken, which, you know, raw chicken can be okay in moderation, but you don't want to feed nothing but raw chicken to a boa because it's not a complete diet. It's just basically the muscle and the bone. What I would recommend is that you withhold the food from your boa for three or four weeks, and then you try to switch it to a, a rat or mouse or whatever other prey item you want to offer. If it's still reluctant, what I would do is I would scent the rodent with the raw chicken and then offer that to your boa. And chances are pretty good that your boa should switch from eating the raw chicken to eating a more balanced uh, food source. Okay, next question. Do you hook train? And so, actually I have my hook right here that I meant to grab for this particular question. And so this is a Midwest tongs. This is a shorter cage hook. I think it's like 24 inches, but it works really well. And the short answer is no, I don't hook train. I use the hook when necessary, but I don't actually train the animals for the hook. At the most, what I'll do if I have an animal that's somewhat aggressive or there's a chance I might get bitten. Well, I'll basically kind of tap the animal gently with the hook when I open the enclosure, just to you know, kind of orient it that I'm going to pick it up. And then if necessary, I might hook the front third of its body and then grab the tail with my hand. Um, and then usually when I take an, uh, an animal out, I don't use a hook. You can see this guy just wants to kind of grab onto the hook. Um, but usually it's not necessary. Unless I have like a really aggressive boa, in which case I'll support the front third of the animal with the hook and then I'll hold the rest of the body with my hand. You know, I actually didn't even use a hook for the first, uh, you know, probably until about two or three years ago is when I got my hook. I didn't even use a hook up until then and I just kind of grabbed the animal and kind of winged it. And I rarely was I ever bitten, so it wasn't necessary. But once I got the hook, it just made things a lot easier. So I'd recommend if you um, don't have a hook, you might want to look into getting one. It's just a useful tool for handling snakes. I, but I don't go through any kind of training regimen to get my animal trained to the hook. Um, although I think some people have done that. So if you have any thoughts on that, you can just comment below. Okay, so the third question is a question I get asked constantly, almost every day in some form. Um, and the question is, what locality or morph is my boa? Or, you know, where, where can I send you pictures of my boa for confirmation of its identity? Basically that type of a question. And the short answer is, I cannot 100% tell you what your boa is. You know, depending on the boa, I often can give you a pretty good idea based on a picture, at least what it might be. But I can't give you any confirmation. I don't confirm boas' identities other than boas that I bred. You know, if you happen to know, you pick up a boa that I bred, you bought it from someone who got it from me, and you know the year it was born, I can confirm its identity. Other than that, I can't confirm the identity of other people's boas. I can tell you what it looks like to me, but I can't, I'm not, a, you know, an identity service or anything like that. Um, there's a number of issues there. You can't really confirm locality of a boa from a picture. The locality is not really attached to the boa. It just happens to be where the boa was collected or the, the ancestors of the boa were collected. But the identity is not kind of imprinted on the boa itself. Of course, you can say, well, that boa looks like it might be from Suriname or Guyana or it might be from Peru, but you can't really prove it. 
And then the other issue with this is that a lot of boas in captivity are either crossbred of different types of localities together or they're so far descended from the original founder animals that they're not really locality boas anymore. They've been irreversibly changed by captivity. So at this point they're basically like domestic or at least semi-domestic animals. Um, so uh, people are just obsessed about the identity of their boa but in the, law, in the end it's really not all that important unless you're breeding the boas. If you're a pet keeper and you're just keeping a boa as a pet uh, you don't really need to know the exact locality. And like I said, it probably doesn't even have an exact locality at this point. It's kind of like with dogs. A lot of people, myself included, have mixed breed dogs and we look at them and we think, well, it might be this breed or that breed, but we can't really know. And even with the advent of DNA testing for dogs, you know, I've had my mixed breed dog tested with several different DNA services and they gave me results that give me a, a clue as to its identity but the percentages of the different breeds are a little different and sometimes you get different breeds so I have an idea that maybe it has some Chihuahua and some Yorkshire Terrier and some miniature Poodle and some Rottweiler but I can't really tell what percentage exactly but it, does it really matter? No because this is my pet dog I just enjoy you know taking care of them I'm not going to breed them so in the long run it just doesn't matter and so a lot of boa pet keepers, you'd be better off not worrying about your boa's exact identity and just worrying about caring for your boa and enjoying it and giving it the best possible home. Really, unless you're gonna be breeding boas and making claims about their identity and loca locality information, you don't need to know 100% exactly what it is. You know, if you are gonna be breeding locality boas, of course, though, it's really important to track the identity and the pedigree as much as you can and provide that information to the people who purchase your offspring. Next question, what kind of totes do you use? And by totes, they mean the tubs or the plastic enclosures that hold the snakes in rack systems. And so in most of my videos, you'll see in the back, these large homemade racks they use these big plastic tubs and those are the vision boa tubs and they have a size of 30 inches by 40 inches by 11 inches deep and they work pretty well for small to medium sized boas up to about five and a half maybe six feet tops and you might think well you know most boas get bigger than that but in my experience a lot of boas don't in fact most of these dwarf and semi-dwarf boas can be kept in these enclosures and sub-adults of the larger types of boas like Argentines and True Red Tails. I also use a variety of other sizes in some of my smaller racks, anywhere from 6 quart and 16 quart Sterilite tubs to the 28 quart Sterilite tubs that I use as kind of a sub-adult rack and those are good for animals that are a couple years old. Uh, I have some racks that I've built using the uh, iris under the bed storage tubs which work okay but you know they're really for smaller not quite full grown boas. You can maybe up to around a you know, three to four foot boa in those. Um, but I like the vision boa tubs for the small to medium size adult boas. Um, you know people curse rack systems a lot and they put them down but rack systems have a lot to offer and many of my snakes are a lot more comfortable in a enclosure that consists of a plastic tub versus a plastic snake cage or some other type of enclosure. Uh, you know I think a lot of the hang up people have with rack systems is they have this idea that the snake is not getting a, as much space. But of course an animal should get the same amount of space whether it's in a tub in a rack system or in a plastic snake enclosure or whatever other type of enclosure. You know it doesn't matter the type of enclosure they all need a certain amount of space. And so there are rack systems which offer more space but you know ultimately if it's too small for the given boa you need to get a larger enclosure. And that's maybe where the rack systems you, you know you can't get a rack system that is you know eight foot in the enclosures although they do have some really expensive wild rack systems like from the Freedom Breeder um, that are you know somewhere around you know five and a half feet or so but those are a little bit out of my price range. Another question I get a lot is do you work with Doomerals boas? If so why not? And so I don't work with Doomerals boas you know I think they're real nice looking I've 
almost picked up some of them you know quite some time ago back when they were really inexpensive a local pet shop actually had a bunch of them for, available for sale and i almost grabbed them and they were like 150 dollars each at the time um, and then, you know as as nice as they look there's just there's a limit to what i can work with and i've chosen to focus on the different boa constrictors including boa constrictor boa imperator boa sigma uh, specifically the locality types like this Suriname red tail boa and you know I'd rather kind of focus more and you know do a more complete job working with something than to kind of cast a broader net and as nice as the doomers look I do just I don't do, I just don't have the space for them and it's not that I have anything against them or any bad experience or anything it's just uh, I can't work with everything okay next question do you have a website okay so I don't have a website um, to me websites are kind of 1998 you know maybe it was cool you know a generation ago to have a website but now we have other forms of communication online that are quicker and a little more efficient things like Facebook YouTube Instagram you know the other social media Flickr I like as far as sharing photos without all the issues that you know Facebook and Instagram have I did, you know, I had actually had a website back in the early 2000s, not for my boas, but for my photography. Back then I was really into landscape photography and making fine art prints. And I went through all this hassle to learn the HTML coding and set up a website and it took a lot of time. And then nobody actually went to the website. I was getting maybe like 20 hits a day on a good day. And that was like if I told my friends to go visit the website. So it was really disappointing. I don't think I sold anything off of the website. You know, I wasn't really trying to sell them, but you know, if someone saw one of my prints and they wanted a, a print for their wall, that'd be nice, but didn't end up selling anything. So after a few years, I just gave it up and I stopped paying the, the yearly fee to, uh, for the website and for the, the, the uh, hosting of the website. But you know, I, I feel like these days there's just so many other ways you can reach people and you can share with them what you're doing other than a website and you know as you probably guess i'm just so busy filming these videos and going to you know the other types of social media to post content on my boas i just don't have the time or the need for a website next question and this was asked in reference to a video i did on suriname boas and they asked is there a trace of the jungle gene in the third suriname boa that you showed in that video and short answer is no these animals they don't have any jungle gene bred in and by jungle gene i specifically mean the gene associated with the morph known as jungle and this is an incomplete dominant morph and um, if you have one copy of the jungle gene in the animal, the animal will typically have a cleaner pattern. It will have a really clean back, you know, with very little markings along the back. It will have aberrant looking saddles. So typically the saddles will be kind of more geometric looking. Often they'll have a lot of uh, striping as well. But the jungle gene is really a um, variable gene. You know, some animals that have the jungle gene don't really show much. They're called low expression jungles. Other animals that have it have much more aberrant phenotypes. And then the super form, which is when an animal has two copies of the jungle gene, will have these really large eyes and this really kind of reduced pattern. It's just a really unusual looking animal. There's some controversy about these animals because some people claim that they're not really healthy. Some people claim that they, they are, they just, uh, you need to grow them a little bit slower. So there's still, you know, it's kind of up in the air about the health of these super jungle boas. But anyway, jungle is a phenotype as far as the striping and the aberrancies. You see a lot of this in lots of different types of boas that has absolutely nothing to do with the jungle gene. Some boas just have aberrant patterns. They have striping or their saddles are kind of broken up or they're just cleaner looking overall. And this often has absolutely nothing to do with the jungle gene. So it, just because you see an animal that kind of looks jungly or you know, looks like a similar appearance as the jungle gene, does not mean that it has the jungle gene. And then the other thing about the, about the question they asked about, there's a trace of the jungle gene. That's really not how it works. An animal either has the gene or it doesn't. You can't really have a trace of the jungle gene any more than an animal could have a trace of the IMG gene or trace of the albino gene. 
So no, these animals don't have the jungle gene. Other than I do have some morph animals that are jungle and those will have the jungle gene. Thought I'd go ahead and grab one of my jungle animals. This is actually a 2022 holdback animal. This guy is a jungle Moran. So he's got the jungle gene as well as the Moran pastel gene. You can see the jungle causes the striping and this aberrancies to the saddles, as well as a cleaner look overall and more saturated colors. This guy's doing really well and he's put on some good size, you know, since he was born over the summer. Okay, a few more questions. So next question, what are the chances of me getting bitten once I have my boa in my hand? Okay, this is not a question I can definitively answer. I don't know your boa, I don't know how aggressive it is. Um, you know, if you are able to pick up your boa, if the boa is aggressive in the cage, sometimes when you pick a boa up, it'll calm down a little bit once you have it in your hand, but sometimes it doesn't work like that. So there's not really a way that I can definitively tell you. Um, if your bow is acting aggressively, it's probably not a good idea to just go pick it up. You might want to try to use a hook or, you know, use a tool or something to manipulate it so you don't end up getting bitten. Okay, a couple more questions. Number nine, any signs of breeding yet with the Argentines? So I have some Argentine boas paired up right now. I have my fingers crossed. Unfortunately, I didn't produce any Argentines in 2022. I had a pairing, but it didn't pan out, which was quite disappointing. But I'm really hopeful that 2023 will be the year for Argentines for me. The last time I bred Argentines was in 2015. And Argentines were the first boa that I bred back in uh, 2005. So they always have a special place in my heart. Uh, so I'm hoping that I will have Argentines this year. I have seen some signs of activity. My male is courting the female. I can't tell for sure if he's copulated with her yet, but it looks like he's sure trying. And, you know, with any luck, we'll have some babies over the summer. Although with breeding boas, there's no guarantees. I do my best to produce these boas, but it unfortunately doesn't always work out. So we'll just have to see. Okay, one more question. If you could add one type of boa or morph to your collection, what would it be? So this is kind of a hard question and there's a lot of possible answers, you know, depending upon how I feel at a particular moment you ask me the question. I'd have to say though that there are a few locality boas I don't have in my collection uh, that I would like to add, but you know, at this point my collection is basically mature. I just don't have the space or bandwidth to add any more projects. And so probably the top of my list, some of the Mexican boas I really find interesting, like the Tamaulipas Cloud Forest boa. So these are somewhat similar to the Tarahumara boas. They're smaller and um, you know, the coloration is a little bit similar, kind of a darker color with really nice iridescence, but just a really cool looking dwarf boa. Uh, you know, another obvious pick would be boas from Central America. Since I have a lot of the Central American Island boas, but I don't have many mainland Central American boas. So, you know, some obvious ones would be like the, uh, the Costa Rican boas, the Nicaraguan boas. And I'm also really interested in the mainland Belize boas. You know, since I have boas from the Belize Islands, Kalki and Kualki, there's a mainland Belize boa that was, it was a um, project started by Dr. Scott Boback about 20 years ago. And there's actually a National Geographic documentary, and you might be able to find it on YouTube, but they show him collecting the animals from which the line was descended. He actually collected them at this dump in Belize City. He just went to this dump, and there were these boas living under the garbage, and he collected them. And these are the uh, founder animals that started this project. I know some of you guys have these. I know they are available. Um, Maybe I'll have them someday, but you know, for now, I just don't really have the space in my collection, you know, for any more boas. Um, and then, you know, I guess I'd have to pick a third since we're talking about locality boas. It would probably be the silverback amorali boas. Since right now, I don't have too many amorali boas. I just have some um, of the orange crush amorali from Joe Terry bloodline. So I'd like to have some of the silverbacks as well. And then I guess I'll pick a morph because I just gave you, you know, several localities. 
I probably, if I was going to get just one morph bow, I'd probably go for one of the super fires or, you know, princess diamond, you know, emperor diamond, leucistic bow, whatever you want to call it. Just as far as kind of a pinnacle morph, you know, a morph that's kind of, you can't really do anything else with it because you wouldn't really want to cross it with something else. But just that pure white bow is just, uh, just really cool looking and, you know, maybe I'll have one someday, but, um, right now I have my moon glow which I really like as well. And he's, you know, my moon glow isn't quite as pure white as the leucistic boa, but still a really cool looking animal. You know, that being said, I don't have any plans to acquire any more boas and I'm kind of peaked as far as it is. You know, just being able to keep a few holdbacks a year is enough boas, you know, to keep my collection growing, you know, manageably and to, you know, increase my breeding stock and my, you know, my, my potential projects for the future. So. I'm kind of all set as it is without adding any more boas to the collection. So that was some of your questions and some answers. Hope it was helpful. As I always keep the questions coming and you know I'll have more videos like this in the future where I answer the questions. Uh, shoot me any comments you have below. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.